The United Kingdom was one of the early countries to enter the field of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The ferry company began research as early as 1946, and soon after, the British government proposed the E.10-47 specification, vertical takeoff fighter. The ferry company, with a certain technological foundation, quickly came up with its own plan, the FD-1, Ferry Delta-1. Initially called the Ferry R, the FD-1 was designed by the company to be an interceptor that could vertically take off from small surface vessels or aircraft carriers. It's important to note that it was only capable of vertical takeoff, not vertical landing. The FD-1 would be assisted by rocket boosters and launched from a sliding track, similar to some missiles. For landing, it would use a conventional landing gear. The FD-1 had a short, stout fuselage, weighing about 3,100 kilograms, with a length of 8 meters and a wingspan of about 6 meters. It featured a delta-shaped midwing and a triangular tail, with single-seat piloting and powered by a Rolls-Royce Derwent 8 centrifugal turbojet engine capable of generating 16 knots of thrust. The air intake was located in the nose, and it had a retractable tricycle landing gear. The designers hoped that the aircraft could achieve supersonic flight. Its delta wing design was indeed prepared for high-speed flight, but at the time, there was still insufficient understanding of supersonic flight, and the FD-1 ultimately disappointed the designers. Originally, three prototypes were ordered, and the first prototype was completed and tested in 1950. Initially, it underwent ground taxiing tests, followed by airborne flight tests to assess the longitudinal and lateral stability of the aircraft. It was found that the aircraft had poor stability, and adjustments were made, such as cancelling the installation of a spiral parachute at the wingtip, reducing the size of the control surfaces, and adding triangular tail fins to the tail. These modifications helped improve the aircraft's performance to some extent, but did not significantly improve its speed. The designers had expected the aircraft to reach a maximum speed of about 1,000 km per hour. Although it couldn't achieve supersonic flight, it would still be considered high subsonic. After the modifications, the aircraft's flight became more stable, but its speed needed to be limited to below 555 km per hour. It couldn't even fly as fast as a propeller-driven fighter, let alone supersonic. The reasons why the FD-1 couldn't achieve supersonic flight were manifold. In addition to aerodynamic layout flaws, the power configuration was also inadequate. The centrifugal engine was not suitable for supersonic flight due to reasons such as insufficient air compression. Modern supersonic fighter jets now mostly use axial flow jet engines, which can generate more powerful thrust through multi-stage air compression. The FD-1 did have the potential to be launched into the air with the assistance of rocket boosters, but it had more problems than potential. The order for the remaining two aircraft was cancelled in the fall of 1951, and the sole prototype flew a few times over the next few years. In February 1956, it was severely damaged due to the right main landing gear not deploying, and the aircraft was eventually transported to the Schuberines firing range to be used as a target.